I'm a chilled character. I'm not stressed. I don't want to be stressed. And I've just got to nail my food. That's it. I can't wait to go in there and just show where I'm all about, really. The minute our chefs walk into the Master Chef kitchen, that's when the challenge begins. I want to see someone that pushes me to think about food in a different way. Let's see if they have what it takes. This is the last skills test. Last skills test of the competition. Monica, what are you going to get them to do? Today, I would like our chefs to make a snoogie team, serve it with a white chocolate green tea mousse and some coolie. The skills test makes the chefs nervous, we know that. A pastry skills test makes them even more nervous. How long are they going to get for this? 15 minutes. OK. This I'd like to see. First thing, they've got to make a, a white chocolate mousse. They'll need to, to crack on very quick, get that made and uh, get it cool. Heat up a little bit of the cream here. Add some of the, the green tea powder into this cream. No matter how much pastry experience they've had, you'd expect them to be able to make a mousse, right? Yes, and uh, I've weighed the ingredients out for, for this particular recipe for them to make sure it will work. I've just added the cream and the tea mix into the white chocolate, I'm just whisking it through. Cool this down. I have the remaining cream. I'm going to whisk it up. I'm also going to get the caramel started. Sugar in the pan. I'm adding some glucose to it. Very lightly fold in the whipped cream. And that's it. We're going to leave that to set. The nougatine, is that caramel just poured over the almonds and allowed to cool? That is uh, one of the best ways to, to do it. Um, but what I'm going to do is blitz the almonds and add them to the caramel, and then I'm going to pour that onto a steel pack and roll it out really thin. Fine. So you see the caramel is coming up. So you see it's lovely and golden, starting to bubble up. I've just added the almonds into the caramel. You can see it's going really quick. The sugar will continue to cook. I need to pour that into my seal pat, cover it, and I have to roll it really quick, so I'm not going to talk anymore. Why has she got to roll it quick? Because as soon as it gets cold, it's going to be set. So she needs to roll it fast so she can cut her discs out before the thing goes rock hard. If you asked me to make one, I would have just poured the caramel over the flake nuts without even crushing them, so I would have had one as thick as your thumb. Because it's a powder, you want to absorb the caramel around everything. It's up to them how much of this they want to use. Really quickly, going to knock out a, a quick coulis, just some raspberries, just a, a tap of uh, xanthan for it, just, just want it to hold when I put it on the plate. Xanthan? Yes. Xanthan is just a, a stabiliser. And I'm now just passing the seeds out. Tough old challenge, this, Marcus. It is. Very much. So now I'm just going to prepare some fruit to, to serve with everything. And I like them to just sort of enjoy this part of uh, putting their dessert together. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I think they'll be lucky not to run away. So dainty. Wow. Got our nougatine. Mm. And then just some lemon balm to finish around the plate. And I'm just going to finish it with a shaving off the almond. And there we have it. Nougatine, white chocolate, a green tea mousse with a coulis.
that's rich and sweet. Beautiful. It's an interesting part of the dish, the nookie team. Yeah. But it's not rock hard, it's not over bitter, it's not too sweet, it's just a lovely texture and complements the mousse so well. We know you can do it. Get the chefs in here. Let's see if they can do it. You ready? I'm ready. More than ready. First in is Rich, a development chef at a large catering company in Nottingham. I was going to be a psychologist, and then ended up a chef. <laughs> Having chefery as a skill takes you anywhere that you want to go in the world, literally. It doesn't matter if you turn up at Singapore tomorrow, Japan next week, Australia, and it, it doesn't matter where you land. To describe my food, I'd say it's Scandinavian Asian fusion. There is a little part of me that worries that they won't understand my food, but if they don't understand it, then, you know, I guess they don't understand it, and that will be disappointing, for sure. Welcome to Professional MasterChef. This is the skills test, the dreaded skills test. This one, pastry test, was set by Monica. OK. How are you in the pastry department? Um, I'm OK, but we'll see what happens, I guess. <laughs> I would like you to make for us today a fine almond nougatine served with a white chocolate and green tea mousse with a raspberry coulis. OK. You have some fruit that you can use to garnish your dish at the end. You have 15 minutes. Off you go, Rich. Right. seem very comfortable. Is, is pastry something that you, you like? I enjoy the, uh, you know, the intricacy, the getting it all right, um, as long as it goes right, of course. You've had five minutes, Chef. Thank you. OK, so the, the mousse is in the blastula. Yep. Your caramel's working. Yep. And what's next? I think I'm going to work on a coulis. Xanthian gum. What's happened, Richard? Um, I've put too much xanthian gum in it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it by adding a drop of warm water to it. Okay. Rich, you've got five minutes left, Chef. Thank you very much. Done. Done. Yeah, finished. Raspberry coulis, yes, blitz it. Icing sugar, that works. Lots of xanthan, doesn't. Xanthan gum will turn it to gum. You only need literally a gram. As soon as I added more xanthan gum, I knew what the, uh, the problems I was going to see were. I like the green tea mousse. I think you've got the right quantity of green tea set against the cream and the white chocolate. It tastes a lot better than it looks. Thank you. <laughs> the, the nougat tea, for me, you got away with it. It's still very thin. You're not going to break your teeth eating that. And the caramel is cooked really well. Thank you. Tell you what, I'll show you how to make a coulis and you teach me how to plait your hair. No problem. And me. <laughs> Off you go, chef. He's good. I like the way it works as well. Uh, under pressure, not bad, not bad at all. You have no idea what to expect, do you? So um, a lot of things that I would have done in a normal kitchen, I didn't do. And a lot of things I'd have never have done in my kitchen, I did do. <laughs> Next in is Sai, a 37-year-old head chef from Suffolk. 
been head chef for about 10 years now. By about the age of nine, I decided that this is what I was going to do with my life, and from 13 to now, I've dedicated my life to it. It's not just a job, it's, it's not just a career, it's a complete life. When I walk through the door and I put the, my chef jacket on, it's, I've, I'm at home, it's my kitchen, it's my domain. I'm very much a knife and pan chef, not sort of all gadgets and new bits and pieces, because that's not what I've learned. And, I'm very much a raw, honest chef, and I want to get that across. So I, I would like you to make us a fine almond nougat team, uh, serve it with a white chocolate and green tea mousse, and a raspberry coulis. Well, wow. I'm nervous now. Take a deep breath, assess what's in front of you, and work like a chef as best as you can. I couldn't imagine anything worse than this. Just think, just think, just think, just think, just think. Just... I've just realised what I've done. I should have melted the chocolate and then put the cream in, but I didn't think. Right, OK, I'll... I'll... So you do know how to do it, then? Yeah, I just panicked. Now you're making your nougat team. Which isn't going to work. See, I didn't melt the sugar, I didn't get that caramelised, I didn't add the glucose. So, I'd, so I'd, I know I've done that all back to front. Oh. You've got six minutes, right. Si. OK. It's not going to work. You're all right with your coolie, though. That's that's going to get done, right? Yeah. No, this is not what you wanted, but I'm rather going to serve you something than nothing. Okay. Coolie? Yep. No, it's not what you wanted, but I tried to recover from what I did. I'm absolutely convinced you know how to do this. What was going on? Everything went kind of a bit blank. I couldn't reverse it, though, once I'd already started. Once you've panicked, you know, you could not control yourself. I hope you can get those nerves underwrapped and focus on your signature dish. Yeah. Yep. Probably the most nerve-wracking skills test I've ever watched. It's annoying, it's frustrating because you know how to do something and you completely make a real pig's ear of it and I've messed up really and then I've now got to try and pick myself up and dust myself off for the, for, for the next round. Last to face Monica's skills test is Mark, a self-taught chef who runs a small restaurant in Brighton. We're doing an 11-course tasting menu. Uh, my wife does front of house, and I'm, I'm in the kitchen by myself. Being the only chef, I have to know everything about every course, and I'm pretty confident in what I do. Part of the appeal of working by myself is the ability to come up with new dishes. Lots of creative freedom. It's a chef's dream. How are you, Mark? Very good, very good. I would like you to make for us a fine nougatine, serve it with a white chocolate green tea mousse and a raspberry coulis. How does that sound to you? Yeah, good. Yeah? Hey. Brilliant. You have 15 minutes. Good luck.
Mark, what type of food do you like cooking? A little bit of everything. I like, uh, I like using British ingredients mixed with Asian flavours, some classical techniques in there. Is that the food you cook in your pop-up? Yeah, we kind of do a tasting menu, so quite a few flavours. We have five minutes left, please. So, Mark, where are we at? I've mucked up the nougat team. Didn't work it out, so I'll probably just leave it off. Uh, that's it, I'm done. Yummy! Yum with food is always a good sign, in my opinion, Mark. Yeah. Lovely, lovely mousse. So smooth. You've got the taste of the matcha green tea coming through that as well. Missing the nougatine, but what's on the plate, Mark, it's very good. Mark, it tastes great. And there's a lovely zing of the raspberry coulis that, that takes away the sweetness of the white chocolate. And the whole thing is light, it's fresh, it's crisp. It's a great start to the, to the competition. Thank you. Very much looking forward to seeing you cook again. Off you go. Thank you. Thank you. Good lad. I'm feeling good, you know. I knew the basis of it. It's just a shame that I mucked up with the, uh, the new team. We've seen a fair few skills tests now, haven't we? They've just attempted yours, the chefs. Marcus, what are you going to ask the chefs to make? I'm going to ask them to make a cold Andalus soup, tomato soup serve with its traditional garnish of egg and ham. What I'm looking for is a big, strong, deep flavoured tomato soup with the sunshine of the Mediterranean. Fair enough. How long have they got? 15 minutes. Ready? Absolutely. So they need to get the egg on first. Now I'm just going to peel down a couple of shallots and a couple of cloves of garlic. I can't really put a raw shallot of this strength into a soup because you'll just taste the onion and you'll just taste the garlic. So I'm going to put them into a pan of olive oil and just gently cook them down and then I'll add that back into the soup a little bit further down the line. Normally with a soup like this you would put all the ingredients together and marinate them in the fridge for a good couple of hours if not even 24 hours. So I'm looking for a chef that really understands the fact that you haven't got time to marinate this. You've got to use your chef skills to look at the ingredients and maximise as much flavour out of those ingredients as you possibly can. We're just going to add some tomato juice. So this is where the chef really just needs to use their eye. Tomato paste. Tin tomatoes. A little bit of smoky paprika. This is hot. You should be very careful how much you use. Worcestershire sauce. And our sherry vinegar. We know what a good ripe tomato tastes like, but I want to see the chef just tasting what they're adding into it. Well, the one ingredient that we need to add to it now is bread. I'm just going to use sliced white bread, and it'll just absorb the liquid much quicker. And it sort of helps bind it all together, because there's quite a lot of water within these tomatoes. You know, the bread there, they could look at it and think, crouton. I don't mind croutons as long as they keep some of the bread to thicken the soup. In goes the oil and the cooked shallots. Let's turn that off. I'm, I'm going to leave it in the blender because I'm just going to start the, the garnish that goes on top. I'll re-energise it by just putting a little bit more air into it before I put it into the bowl. I don't want the egg hot when it goes on the dish. It needs to be nice and cold. Everything about a cold soup is cold. So we'll just bring this back to life. OK, ready to serve. A little bit of chopped black olive. 
basil, and we're ready to go. Beautiful. Cold Andalou soup with egg and serrano ham. Andalusian soup bowl or gazpacho is an easy thing to make pretty because it's a bowl of soup. This, however, is really lovely. There's some, so many layers of, of flavours when you eat this. I mean, the, 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 the main one is, is that has to stand out, of course, is, is, the, is the tomato. If they've made a gazpacho before, great. Even so, I think the fact that there's little cooking mm. is going to actually worry them. It's going to make them nervous. It is, but there's no trickery here. And it's just a matter of the most important thing, taste. And that's what this test is all about. First to face Marcus's test is classically trained head chef Bobby from Tunbridge Wells. Life as a chef, I love every single minute of it. It's just a buzz every day I come in the kitchen. Uh, having my food judged uh, is always scary. It doesn't matter who it is. It's nerve-wracking any time because I'm passionate about my food. I want it to be right. Bobby, welcome to Professional Master Chef. This is one of Marcus's skills tests. What I'd like you to make for us is a Andalusian soup. It is a cold tomato soup. OK. And it's garnished with egg and ham. OK. And it's going to be thickened with bread. All right. 15 minutes, off you go. Right, Bobby, tell me, what's the plan? Uh, the plan is season up my tomatoes, a bit of shallot in there, blitz it up, get a bit of basil in there, paprika, boil my egg up. You made a cold soup before? Yeah, like a spatula, I mean. You've had five minutes, all right? Yep. Bobby, in the absence of 12 hours, 24 hours to marinate this soup, what, what is it that's going to give this a bigger, bigger flavour? Well, I've just got to uh, season the tomatoes up, get the full potential out of it. Shea vinegar also chucked in there, that'll bring out the flavour. Bobby, seven minutes left, halfway. Yes. We've got three minutes left. That's you done, though, isn't it? Pretty much. All done? Yeah. I set this challenge because I wanted to see how you deal with maximising as much flavour as you can with the ingredients in front of you. When you've got shallots and garlic to go into effectively a raw dish, you need to cook them down in some oil. Yeah. The egg should have been the first thing that went on to boil is a hard-boiled egg that's chopped up with ham and sits on top of the soup. Okay. It's very harsh garlic, very harsh shallot. We haven't really enhanced the flavour of tomato. It's not great. You've had a lot of uh, ingredients that I think had you sort of stepped back and, and reassessed the table, you'd make those completely different. It may look and sound easy, to, to make a cold soup, but it's one of the hardest things to get right. Listen, I don't, think, I don't think you shot yourself in the foot. I don't think you condemned yourself, you just haven't made the most of this opportunity, that's all. Still in the game, first test over, on to the next one. Hopefully the soup will be forgotten. Next, is Romanian-born Matei, who is a head chef in Newcastle for a UK hotel chain. 
we are very, very busy in the, in the hotel, especially, you know, having to cover breakfast, lunches, dinners. Sometimes for breakfast, we can do 400 people, which is massive. After I spend so many hours at work, sometimes I'm going home and I still have something, ideas in my mind I want to practice again. So sometimes my wife caught me two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning, you know, cooking again, you're hungry again. So you know, I just practice, it's like, you mother, just like going upstairs. I know I'm quite ambitious. I know I have skills. But I'll not give up without uh, fight in a good sense. Service, please. I say, I would like you to make an Andalus soup. I need you to get as much flavor out of those ingredients as you possibly can. Off you go. Matteo, how are you going to maximise all these flavours? Well, I'll try to blend all those nice ingredients, taste it and see how they go together. If not this, this soup, um, have, have you made a gazpacho? Yes. A couple of years ago was the last time when I made it. Got seven minutes left, OK, yes. Chef? Looks more hard than looks on TV. <laughs> What's your thinking behind the ham and the, the crouton? Just I try to make uh, a bit of uh, Parma ham crisp. Crisp. And uh, to make some nice croutons and uh, I see the poached egg and put everything around. Couple of minutes left. Come on, chef, finish it up. All done? Yes, sir. It doesn't look vibrant and colourful, but it looks a little bit like a muddy puddle. Say, croutons and cooked ham and a poached egg don't go with this dish. The bread is in the soup to thicken it. You don't just put all the ingredients into the liquidizer and blitz it all up. Raw shallot, raw garlic, and a lot of raw paprika makes it un unpleasant for eating. Okay. It's not great. Uh, the process wasn't great, and you need to come back guns blazing in the next round. Okay. Obvious from their point of view, I didn't do well, uh, but I understand uh, what I've done wrong and I take it on board. Last to face Marcus's skills test is 30 year old Jamie, a sous chef working in Newmarket. I don't think I chose to be a chef, I think the industry chose me. Started as a pot washer, seeing the chefs work along with the food, and one of them turned around to me and said, Could you do this? I was like, no. <laughs> and then he, he says, yeah, you can. Come on, I'll show you. And then it just went from there. Left school and went straight into the kitchen. I'm feeling very nervous, but I think once the nerves are out of the way and I start going for it, I think, yeah, I'll really go for it. So uh, as long as I don't put chips and gravy, I'll be all right. Jamie, I would like you to make us a cold Andalusian soup. OK. Kind of got a drift of that, yeah. 15 minutes, off you go. OK. Tell me, what's your plan? Uh, basically to go with some sort of uh, gazpacho base, blitz it down, go on a shoot with a poached egg and the parma ham. Have you made a cold soup like this before? Uh, not for a long time, no, not since I was a common chef. Yeah. 
five minutes left to make this soup. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no problem. What? I need to put the shallots into the soup. I'm just adding the spice to it to uh, give it a bit more intensity, really. I don't really want to add the shallots raw due to the fact of to give it a tainted taste. Whoa! <laughs> Jamie! Calm down. Oh, sorry. You're too big to be chucking stuff about. <laughs> All done? Yes. Find out that. Sorry about that. You might have put it in a china shop. That was, yeah. It was fabulous to see that you chopped your shallots and garlic and cooked them down That's exactly what I did. I'm just a little bit concerned at the, the quantity of paprika that you put into the, uh, to the onions. The soup is not as hot as I was, I was expecting it to be. I don't want uh, an egg yolk running into my soup there. It's got to be a hard boiled egg. Okay. But you've got sweetness there. You have, in my opinion, enhanced the tomato, and I love the smoky under flavour of paprika. Thank you. Jamie, it's a nice soup per uh, garnish apart. Not bad. Thank you very much. See you soon. Off you go. Thanks, Jamie. Just went with my basic instinct. Uh, the garnish was awful, but uh, I was really happy with the, the rest of the dish, really. Wow, that's it. That's the last skills test. We've had 48 chefs come through the kitchen with so much variation in skill and ability. What a journey, quite extraordinary. We got some that actually did OK. I think we've got a couple that were absolutely brilliant. And we've got a couple that were so nervous, you, wouldn't, you don't know whether they're good or bad. Yeah. Well, this is going to make for a very interesting signature round. Not off. Chefs, welcome to the signature dish round. This is a real opportunity for you to show us exactly who you are with your own dish. Today has got to be absolutely outstanding because at the end of it, we will lose three of you. 90 minutes to cook an absolutely outstanding signature dish. Chefs, off you go. I want to showcase uh, what I can do as far as uh, flavour combinations are concerned. There are a couple of things that I'm going to be doing differently, which may or may not pay off for me. I'm doing a kaffir lime butter poached um, piece of hake on a coconut cashew and cannelloni bean curry. There's a muli that's going to be poached and then pankoed in a black sesame panko. I don't know what to expect from this dish. What are we going to taste? You're going to taste, ultimately, there's going to be a very fishy flavour. Yeah. That's what I want. And the second thing is going to be the creaminess from the, the coconut and the cashew nuts, or the flavours that go with Asia. Where, where do strawberries come into the equation? As the acidity for your fish. Instead of lemon or lime, like sure. traditional, we use that instead. Um, Rich, I've got to be honest, yep. I'm, I'm as scared as I am excited. That's good. I'm really intrigued by all the different flavours, the oiliness of the fish, the creaminess and the coconut going on in the curry. I'm really liking the sound of this dish. My plan is to, to go there and to cook the best I know. 
I need to to make sure everything what I put on that plate is perfect to turn everything around and uh, can come on top. I'm doing a smoked pork loin, which will be wrapped in uh, parma ham and uh, spinach, and I'll serve it with a nice carrot puree, some small faggots. What are you smoking it with? Uh, hickory. Oh, hickory. Hickory yeah. Is there a sauce to go with it, or, or just a puree? No, it'll be a, a cider sauce. And what is it that you love about cooking? Uh, I think I have this one in my blood. It's, for me, being a chef, it's more uh, a passion than a job, and I spend so many hours uh, there just to create different dishes and that's coming only from passion. I like the sounds of Mate's dish. The pork loin for me, you know, it needs uh, something to really enhance that and he's going to do that by smoking it and wrapping it in palm ham. Hopefully that will also protect it and keep it from drying out. I love the idea of the sauce the acidity of the cider, balancing out with the cream. I'm really pleased that he's deglazing the pan because there's going to be all those beautiful juices uh, in the bottom of the pan. 25 minutes gone, all right? 25 minutes gone. My signature dish is a uh, curried hake with chickpea curry and a uh, king crab onion bhaji. After the skills test, which was a disaster. I have to nail it, otherwise I'm going home. Why are you doing the food of India? Uh, I love spice. I love spicy food. I enjoy the Indian, Asian style of uh, cooking. Have you managed to refine the presentation of this dish then? It's a fish curry at the end of the day, but it's, it's refined. Not three star, but it's refined enough to make it look sexy. And do you have a point to prove now, do you think, after the... After the skills test, definitely, because uh, it wasn't very good. The king crab is a beautiful crab. It's got lovely sweetness to it. Put it into an onion bhaji, that's slightly concerning for me. We don't want to lose this beautiful ingredient within the onions. I want to be able to taste it. Very much looking forward to cooking my own food. They're a tough bunch to please, but if I can get all three of them to enjoy it, then yeah, it's a winner. What are you making for us? I'm um, cooking off uh, lamb loin in its own fat, fused with a bit of thyme and garlic and rosemary. Some crispy goat cheese, a bit of pom puree. Sauce is um, a lamb reduction infused with lavender right at the end. Just a little bit, just a little hit, not too much. It's quite powerful. So who, who inspired you to cook then? My mum cooked a lot. She ran a catering business. I like to think I've, I've overtaken her a little bit, but I'm sure she'll argue about it. Uh-oh, so, uh-oh. We'll Could see, I'll get a phone call in a bit, yeah. don't worry. Mark is using lavender with, with his lamb. As we know, it's very strong and fragrant. It's about getting that balance right. But lamb and lavender and cheese just sounds fantastic. 40 minutes left, 4-0. After that abysmal skills test, I need to go out and prove to the judges that I can cook and that my style of cookery is a bit different than what they might be used to, but... Hopefully a little bit of showman can come out and we can, we can sort of get out there and, and impress them. So si, have you managed to come back fighting? Yes, I have indeed. Good man, good man. So what is your dish today? Um, chili con carne. So we've got a dry rub um, on a backstrap of goat backstrap of venison and ribeye rib steak. Right. Then that will be served with the roasted tomato sauce alongside avocado ice cream, uh, coffee and chilli brittle. Did I hear ice cream? You heard avocado ice cream. What is your thinking bringing ice cream to this dish? To cool the mouth down and then have another element of sort of um, hot and cold going on in the mouth. You're playing with some really big, big things here. Well, I've always said if I was ever going to come in this competition, this is what I was going to make. Really? Yeah. This is it. This is you going all, all out. Yeah. We've got goat venison and a steak. 
They all have varying degrees of, of cooking temperatures. You just got to get all that right and still have the time to rest them and serve them pink. I've never had an avocado ice cream before. It sounds exciting, sounds different. This is a really unusual dish. You've got 25 minutes left, all right? Pressure is on for this one dish. I'm going all out, but also playing it a little bit safe. There's going to be lots going on with the dish, but not too many flavors going crazy. Tell us about your dish. Uh, basically, I'm doing a take on chicken Kiev, a trio of corn fed chicken, and basically, I'm stripping down the, the wings so it's uh, more of a lollipop, breadcrumbing it, and then I'm getting the fly and then stuffing it with garlic, breadcrumbing that, deep frying that, water bath in the breast. Why this dish for your signature dish? Just, just try to play it safe, really, to begin with. As the competition goes on, I'll be a lot more experimental. Chicken Kiev is a lovely flavoured dish. It's basically chicken with garlic breaded deep fried. I just hope that his take on a chicken Kiev is good. It's going to need to be good because it is a very simple dish. Guys, last five minutes, just five minutes. Three minutes. Get it on a plate. That's it. Stop. Time's up. Phew. Rich, please, up you come. <laughs> For his signature dish, Rich is serving hake infused with kaffir lime leaf and garlic. On a coconut, cashew and cannellini bean curry, sesame coated muli with squid ink gel, pickled strawberries and coriander oil. My first impression is Wow, because it's so different to anything I've seen. I'm finding that um, the bean coconut curry is it's actually lighter than, than I thought it would be. The, the pickled strawberries I find too strong. So there's things I do like, I just find it all too much for me to understand on one plate. I love the fish with that bitter fruit that only becomes strawberry once the fish has gone. I love the watery freshness of white radish that finishes in bitterness, which to me matches the sesame around the outside of it. I find your dish challenging and delightful and intriguing and bordering on genius. If Greg thinks it's genius, <laughs> and that's, he's, he's completely entitled to that opinion, I'm not sure. I'm finding it very hard to sum it up. The fish isn't the best element on the plate for me. The cooking of the, the muli uh, is the best element. You've confused me, Rich. But that's not a bad thing. I'll certainly remember it, that's for sure. It's never a bad thing to have people, you know, sort of questioning what you're doing, as it were. But at the same time, I think that they're very interested in seeing what I can do in the future. Jamie has prepared his take on chicken Kiev. Pan-fried breast, thigh stuffed with garlic butter and a panko-coated lollipop. Served with mashed potato, soy morels, carrot puree, crispy skin and serrano ham. Jamie, it's always difficult when you when you reinvent a dish because you're you're giving us a, 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 an expectation. There are the things that I look forward to in a chicken Kiev. That's the crunchy crumb around the outside, the beautiful, soft, moist chicken breast, and of course the, the garlic and parsley butter that comes running out onto the plate. And I'm not getting that here because I'm getting pompure, 
chicken that's completely separate from the garlic chicken thigh. Uh, the parma ham is a completely different element. This dish is crying out for a new title and a big sauce. You said you wanted to play it safe, but safe doesn't mean it can't be outstanding. The chicken thigh, it is moist, but what I'm not enjoying is, is the raw chunks of garlic and, and the taste that's left uh, in the mouth afterwards. I think this showcases your, your skill and your touch without actually delivering me a wonderfully soft, garlicky, oozy dish. I just shouldn't have named it Chicken Kiev because I gave it an expectation. I should have just called it a trio of chicken and then delivered that, really. Next is Bobby, serving hake topped with charred yogurt on a bed of chickpea curry and pickled cucumber balls with king crab onion bhajis. I'm looking at this plate and I'm trying to guess which part is the refined part. The fish is nicely cooked, however, under seasoned. The chickpeas are a touch undercooked. The pickled cucumber is very, very strong. You take one of the best crabs on the planet and surround it with an onion bhaji. You can't taste the crab. It's a king crab. It's sweet and moist and oh, just extraordinary when you eat it in its raw state. Why camouflage it with an onion bhaji, of all things? Using spices of the Indian subcontinent, you know, that's, that's, a, that's an art, that's a skill, and you've got to build up layers and layers of flavour, which you just don't get in here. The fish was cooked nicely, and the rest of it was a disaster. Not happy at all. Matei's dish is a hickory smoked pork fillet wrapped in spinach and parma ham, accompanied by a pork and sage faggot, black pudding crumb, confit potato, baby vegetables, and a carrot puree finished with a sweet apple cider sauce. I'm not getting the smokiness of, 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 the, of the pork, yet it's beautifully cooked. There's just not enough sauce on this plate, mm. and the sauce that you have needs more body. But, you know, I, I think it's a great effort. Thank you. The faggot, it is definitely too dry. It needs more fat in it. But the carrot puree, it's sweet. That's how it should be. The veg is cooked properly. I'm surprised and impressed that you've come from where you started up to here. That's good. I redeemed myself uh, after the first round. And, uh, well, to get the feedback from all those three uh, on a high level, I'm quite, quite happy. Sai has prepared his take on chili con carne, venison, goat and ribeye beefsteak, accompanied by a heritage tomato chili and bean sauce, avocado ice cream, candied coffee brittle, edible nasturtiums and grated chocolate. Presentation for me is just uh, not right. It's not as refined as, as I would have liked it to be. I think a lot of what you're doing here is very, very good indeed. The idea of avocado ice cream is inspired because it acts like a writer with an Indian dish and in that it cools down your heat, which it's supposed to do. However, I was craving more chilli, but I couldn't find it. I like the goat and I like the beans. Some of the meat has been overcooked and dry. The avocado ice cream, yes, it tastes like avocado ice cream. Do I like it with a hot dish like this? No, I don't. I think you've tried too hard, Sai. I'd rather you just concentrated just on one meat uh, and give me a really good garnish to go with it. And just think about what a chili con carne is. This is something completely different. Uh, and it doesn't resemble a chili con carne whatsoever. I wanted to show boldness with the dish and to try and be different. And it didn't work. 
Hey ho. Mark, it's your turn, please, chef. Mark's dish is sous vide lamb loin served with panko coated goat's cheese balls, pomme puree, artichokes, broad beans, mushrooms, and a lavender infused lamb sauce. I love those cheese croquettes. I mean, goat's cheese, the tang of that with lamb and sweet flavours, absolutely tried and tested, it's brilliant. That lamb, as a customer, scares me. It looks like three lumps of raw lamb. The pomme puree for me, it's got the right amount of seasoning. And the sauce, I love the lavender. It's just the right balance. You know, you get that too strong and it's like perfume or soap. The meat needed sealing on the outside. It would have held its flavour and added flavour to the lamb itself. I like your ideas and I love the ingredients that you've chosen. I just don't think you've done them justice today. Definitely wasn't uh, my best, but hopefully they saw the technique, they saw the skill, so um, hopefully it'll come out all right. We've seen some talent. We've now got to discuss it and make a big decision. Off you go, chefs, thank you. Today we saw a clash of cuisines. Some of them intrigued me, some delighted me, some absolutely terrified me. There's one guy I'd really like to see cook again, and, and that's Rich. What he packed into one dish I thought was extraordinary. Very, very well organised, very calm, and didn't seem flustered at all. He brings things to the kitchen which I've not done or seen before. So he's got my curiosity is piqued because I want to see if they work. We're going to put Rich through. I'd like to see Rich cook again. I, I would too. I think Bobby knew that he didn't deliver us the perfect curry dish today. And that's a disappointment for him and for us. For me, the dish, it was wrong. It didn't have flavour. It didn't have any balance. And you do not put onion bhaji around a king crab. Mm. and I expect to think that it, it, it's, it's going to make it better. We've put Rich through and we're sending Bobby home. Now we need to discuss the other four. How do you feel about Jamie? Jamie uh, gave us decent chicken. I think it looked nice. I think the chicken was cooked OK, but it was far from remarkable. Uh, I'd have much rather had a, a chicken Kiev, to be honest. I think it would have been better if Jamie had just cooked us a chicken dish and served it with a fabulous sauce and just got rid of the title Chicken Kiev. I'd be really cheesed off if I left the competition because uh, I didn't really push myself as hard as what I could have done. I'd just really need to start stepping it up in the, in the competition. I'd virtually written Matai off after the skills test. That was a decent dish. I thought the cookery of the, the, the port was excellent. We just wanted more sauce. To stay in this competition, it will be a, a massive, massive thing for me. And I feel the taste now and I already have uh, half of the hand on the trophy. <laughs> I quite liked Sai. He had venison, beef and goat, and he turned it into almost a chilli con carne. I didn't get the ice cream on this dish, but I think it was different, it was intriguing, interesting. I've got a few crazy ideas that I'd like to show the judges, but we'll have to see if, if I am lucky enough to get through. I just don't know about Mark. So much to admire, because I love the goat's cheese croquettes, I love the puree, love the lavender sauce. Mark had a lot of positives on this dish. It is the lamb that, for me, is a disappointment. He may have got a few things wrong, but I think Mark is the type of chef that could take on board um, what's been said to him today. I'm not too sure about how confident I am to get through. Everyone's had mixed feedback, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Thank you for your hard work today. You have brought some very interesting ideas into the kitchen today. Some have challenged us, some divided us. We've made a decision. Three of you are leaving the competition. Three of you are going forward to a quarterfinal. The first chef 
leaving the competition is Bobby. Second chef leaving us. is Jamie. The third and final chef leaving the competition. is Sam. Thank, Thank you, my friend. It's a shame to be leaving so early, but I'm proud of what I've done. Maybe I was trying to be a bit too wacky. There was good parts, there were bad parts. I think I should have tried a lot harder in the time scale that I had, really. It wasn't good enough today. Didn't nail it, Don't, didn't do what I do, so that's, that's a result. Congratulations, well done. I'm really, really happy for this achievement. It's a massive, massive achievement. I can't really believe it, to be honest. Feeling great. You know, I've got, I've got a little bit of work to do, but uh, yeah, I'm feeling great over the moon. I'm on top of the world. <laughs> I went for it and it's paid off, but now it's serious game time. Tomorrow night, it's the last quarter-final. And these chefs must once again prove themselves to Marcus and Monica. I've really enjoyed it. I think that is a triumph. Only the best will cook for the critics. It looks challenging and it looks good. It's lovely. It's absolutely